Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. If you've been to a large Mustang car show or spent any time on social media, you've probably seen that air suspension has become a very popular modification for late model Mustang owners. While we've all seen the cars laid on the ground at a car show, that's one very small part of what air suspension can really do, and the real benefit is out on the road. These kits have almost infinite ride height adjustability at the push of a button. With adjustable shocks and struts, they're perfect for daily driver, road racing, or drag racing. One of the leaders in this market is Airlift Performance. We've already shown you how to install their kit on your 2005 through 2014 Mustang. Well, now they have a kit for the 94 through 04 as well. Today we're going to install that on this 2001 Mustang GT. Airlift's motto is drive it, track it, show it, and they provide everything necessary to do that in your 94 through 04 GT in this kit. This uses their V2 controller. It's going to include front struts with the bags already attached, rear shocks, rear air springs, an air tank, an air compressor, as well as the controller and every wire and hose necessary for installation. These are the front struts provided in the Airlift Performance Kit. As you can see, they have a knob on the top. They are fully adjustable, so not only do you have adjustability for ride height with the bag, you can adjust the compression of the strut as well. These will be direct bolts and replacements for the factory struts on your 94 through 2004 Mustang. Between the adjustable sleeve as well as the airbag itself, you have almost five full inches of adjustment with the front struts. The rear shocks are also fully adjustable, so along with the bags, you have almost six inches of adjustment in the rear suspension. You can get whatever ride height you're looking for and then dial in the compression on the shocks and struts to get the best possible ride and performance. The heart of the system is the Autopilot V2 control system. This is the manifold shown here. This is going to connect between the electronics of the system and connect to all the bags, and this is actually the valve body that controls the bags going up and down and controls air coming out of the tank. The controller is going to mount the interior of your car features eight presets, as well as adjustability within one PSI, plus or minus, when you're setting your ride height for performance. In addition to the eight presets, it also has a rise on start feature that when you turn the key on, it's gonna to rise to your drive height, so you don't try to drive the car with it set up too low. There's also several other configurable features in the controller, and we'll show you that once the system's installed. Before we begin the installation, you'll wanna figure out where you're going to mount everything. The tank, the compressor, as well as the manifold, are gonna to have to be mounted most likely in your trunk. You want to make sure you have a clear line to get to everything, so you're going to be fishing wires as well as air hose. To install your Airlift Performance Suspension, you'll need a lift or a jack and jack stands and a basic selection of hand tools. The only specialty tool required for the installation is going to be a hose cutter, which is provided by Airlift Performance with their kits. There's basically two schools of thought when it comes to mounting all the components for the airlift suspension. You either try to hide everything or make it all visible to show it off. In the case of our 01 GT, as you can tell, the owner of this car is pretty big into the show scene, so he wants all the components visible. So we're going to mount the air tank and everything visible right here on the top of the trunk. He's got a custom board already mounted. We're going to use that for mounting our components. It's a lot easier for you to see this outside of the car than to do it inside the car. This is the setup we're going to go with on this 01 GT. We're going to have the compressor mounted here, be powered up, screw on air into our tank, That'll go out to the manifold, then out to all four bags. Once we locate everything, we're going to bolt it down, then we're going to move on to installing the actual suspension components, then we'll come back here later and hook up all of our hoses and wiring. Before we get started with the front suspension, we want to make sure you're aware of a few things. One, this car currently has aftermarket caster camber plates. These will not work with the airlift suspension. The airlift has its own plate mounted to the strut, but you will need the factory supports from the original plates. If you don't have them, you want to pick them up before you begin the installation. To install our front strut assembly, we have to remove the original strut as well as the original spring. The spring is under pressure, so make sure you actually put a jack underneath the control arm and support it. Once we bolt everything, we can lower the jack down and then carefully remove the spring. First thing we're going to do is unbolt the sway bar. Now we're going to remove this nut here. When you take that off, you're going to remove this plate, which is support for your ABS line. To give ourselves more room to lower down the suspension, we're also going to pull the ABS line off the rear bracket in here, right behind the splash shield. Since we're going to be dropping down the spindle itself, we've got to take off the brake caliper. The caliper line is not long enough. If you drop it down, you're going to stretch out the line and damage it. What you're going to do is remove the caliper and bracket and put them aside and secure them out of the way. And the last step here on the strut is to remove these two nuts and bolts. Yeah. 
With everything disconnected, now we can lower down the control arm and lower the spring. Now we'll start removal of the strut. Now we're going to remove our caster camera plate since we can't use it. We have the original suspension. As soon as we remove this, I'll show you what we have to do for your original suspension to prep it for installation of the airlift. If you have stock suspension, this will be the support bracket that will be left once you remove the strut. If you have a caster camber plate, you'll need to get a pair of these before you can install your airlift suspension. What you'll want to do, this is riveted in place. It'll be one rivet in the back here, one rivet on the side. Drill the rivets out, that way this can slide and it'll be used as a support for our airlift. Now we're going to move our spring. If you have an original spring, a spring compressor is probably a good idea. In our case, we have a set of older lowering springs. These will come out much easier. Now we're ready to prep our front struts for installation. If you look on the bottom of the strut, they are side specific, so make sure you grab the correct one. First thing we're going to do before we install it is install the airline. What we'll do is thread it in, it's hand tight, and make note of where it's at. You're going to turn it one and three quarter turns. One and three quarters. Now it's ready to be installed our Mustang. Now we'll put our new airlift strut up into place. Again, up here you want to make sure all your studs are facing as inboard as possible. If you have it all the way out like this, you're going to have some clearance problems. So push it in. We install the original support plate and tighten it down. Once the nuts are on, again, make sure you're not slid outward, make sure you slid inward, and then you can tighten them down. Just get them snug so we can come back later and torque them down. Now you want to jack the control arm back up into place. Make sure you line up the sway bar end link. Bolts in place, now reinstall the nuts. And I'll tighten them down. Everything tight, reinstall the ABS bracket. And we'll tighten that down and reinstall the ABS line back in the clips on the body. Reinstall the bushing and a sway bar end link. Take that just till this starts to crush. And the last step here is going to be reinstall the caliper and the rotor. Throw a wood lug down the road, it'll make it easier to line the caliper back up. Okay, once everything's bolted down here, we're going to go back up top and torque down the top bolts. We're going to torque all three to 25 foot-pounds. Okay, we're going to repeat the process on the other side and move on to the rear. Now we're going to move on to the rear suspension. The first thing we're going to do is remove the sway bar, then we're going to lower the control arms down and remove our stock springs. 
We're going to move the ABS sensor off the bracket here to give us a little more access to the bolt. Now you want to support the lower control arm because it's under pressure from the coil spring. We're going to move the bolt and lower down our jack and remove the spring. Remove all the stock spring parts. Once the spring's out, now you can push the control arm back into place, put the bolt back in. You don't want to tighten it down yet, but get everything back in place, and then later we'll install the bag itself. And you can just get it hand tight for now, we're going to tighten it up later. With the control arm remounted, now we're going to remove our shock. Now you want to move into the trunk and remove the top nut from the shock. Make sure you have someone holding the shocks and release the nut, it doesn't fall out. Now have somebody help you by holding the new shock in place, we're going to install the upper bushing and bolt it down. Repeat the process on the other side. I'll move back underneath, we'll jack it up into place, reinstall the lower shock hardware. And tighten up and then repeat the process on the other side and reinstall your sway bar. Now we're going to start installing the rear airbags themselves. You want to grab the braided line that's included, a little paste on it, we're going to thread that in. The same as everything, hand tight, and then one and three quarter turns. Next, install the upper perch, simply bolts in place. And it's ready to go in the car. Put the bag up in the place, and what you want to do is fish the line up through the factory perch and out the back. You want to make sure the upper perch actually fits inside this opening up here. Now we can install the lower piece. This plate's going to go in below the control arm to center the lower part of the bag. We're going to put the proper fittings now on all of our braided lines at all four corners. Then we're going to start running the actual nylon air lines. As far as running the nylon lines, there's several different ways you can do it. There's no correct way, there's no wrong way. Basically, you want to keep it away from heat. You can run it through the interior of the car, exterior of the car, wherever the easiest way to run it is. Again, keep it away from heat or anywhere it's going to kink. You want to make sure when you connect the front line, you want to have lots of play in this line. You want to make sure you can go full turn to turn and not have any kind of clearance problems. We're just going to make the connection for now. We'll go back and tie this line safely out of the way later. 
Extending the lines is very easy. You want to make sure you've got a perfectly straight, flat cut. If you have it in an angle, if there's an edge on it, you're going to get leaks. It's not going to work properly. If it's flat, all you do is simply press it in. Give it a good tug, but it's locked in place. If you have to release for any reason, just push it in, push down on this collar, and it'll come right out. Okay, we'll fish it up through the back here, and we'll come back and tie it out of the way later. You can see I am fishing the entire line through that comes with it. You can try to guess your measurements, but I find it easier just to do this. That way you're going to be pretty more, a little more accurate as far as your cuts go and the length that you use. We're using a factory hole in the trunk. If all possible, always try to use factory holes, factory grommets. Installing stuff like this, I always try to drill as few holes as possible. Cutting line is very easy. It's a plied cutter. Basically lay the line in the bottom, make sure it's straight, push down to cut it. With the air lines all mounted, now we're gonna install the drain line. This can be used to drain the tank or actually fill it remotely as well. What we did is a factory hole right here. We opened it up just a little bit, put the drain right here in the corner. The drain has the same style fitting as everything else. Just push it in and lock it. Now we're going to start on the wiring. The wiring harness might look a little bit intimidating, but really isn't much to it. This plug here goes to your controller. This goes directly to your battery. This goes to a 12-volt switch source. This plugs into the manifold. These two here will power your actual compressor. And this is your relay you mount in the trunk. That's all there is to it. Airlift provides enough power and ground wire to go all the way to the front of the car to your battery. In the case of our 01, it life's a little bit easier because the battery's right here in the trunk, so it's a short run. The only wires we have to fish to the interior are going to be the 12 volt switch to the fuse box and the controller for fishing to the center console. Airlift provides this adapter for a fuse. Just pick a fuse as a 12 volt switch source, put the adapter underneath the fuse and plug it in. Now we're going to terminate the wires to go to our battery. Standard ring terminal on the negative then grab one of the provided fuses with a ring terminal and that goes to the positive. We're going to cut the pink wire back here and install the inline fuse. You can install it in the front or the back, it doesn't really matter. Since there are other fuses back here, we're going to keep them both in the same place. Make sure as you're doing this, do not put fuses, that way there's no power or anything yet. Now basically our wiring in the vehicle is done. We can go prep the tank, put the board in, and start connecting everything. Now we're going to make all the connections on the tank. We have it out of the car so you can better see what we're going to do here. The bottom, 
is the air drain. That's the one that goes over to the valve stem we mounted on the bottom of the bumper. That's gonna be that connection there. Then in our case, this side here is gonna be the connection to our compressor, as well as a plug. This side here is gonna go over to the manifold, and the other one will also be plugged. Now to ready to connect the tank back in the car. The fittings on the manifold are exactly the same as the ones at the bags. So you have your front left, front right, then rear left, rear right, and then your tank and your exhaust. Connect the exact same way, we'll connect the tank one now. You simply just push it straight in. Give a little tug, you can see it's locked in place. Make our connection up here to our filter. I'll put this in the car and make the rest of the connections. I will install the fuses. Now we'll test everything. When we turn the key to accessory, we should hear the compressor turn on. You can grab the actual controller and you can watch the pressure grow in the tank. You wanna make sure you get some pressure in the tank before you test any of the bags. That will test out the whole system. Now we're going to go into the calibration mode by hitting one and five and holding them down. Here you can set what pressure you want the tank to max out at. We're going to leave it 150, that's fine for what we're doing. Now we have the tank set, we'll go into the calibration mode. We want to system calibrate. Now when you do this, you want to make sure, you, if you have the car, you want to have it hooked up to a battery charger of some sort, this will take some time to do that. Now basically what it'll do, it's going to go through and check controls on all the different corners, as well as the bags, the release, the compressor, make sure everything's working properly. Basically what it's doing now is it's raising the front of the car in small increments, basically making sure it has control over everything. Rise on start's a really cool feature there, right? That you're gonna to wanna, to, in my opinion, you're definitely going to want to turn on. Um, basically the way that works is when you set your presets up, the car, when you turn the key on to start it, it's automatically go to your drive height. And something like that, if you take it to a show, cruising that whatever, and you lay it on the ground, that way you don't try to drive it all the way down because obviously if the car is all the way down, you cannot drive it. When you get it set up for where you want for your preset, you're gonna hit one and five simultaneously, hold it just for a second. So you go into preset mode. You hold the button, you get into the edit, and you can set where you want the PSI to be. We're just gonna make it 48 all the way around, make it nice and easy. Hit one and five at the same time. See that zero, and then preset one is set at 48 all the way around. Now we got rise on start turned on. 
and we'll get out of here. And watch when we start the car, it'll rise up. Once the suspension is working properly, you want to go back and torque down your lower control arms and make sure you tie and hide all the wires and cables and hoses out of the way. While the car looks great laid out on the ground like this, this isn't all an airlift performance is about. Thanks to the fully adjustable shocks and struts, plus the evenly adjustable height thanks to the airbags, this is a true high performance suspension right at home at the track or on the street. The installation is not terribly difficult, but it is time consuming. Give yourself six to eight hours, be back on the road in no time.